Hello and welcome to Shared.Care's What is Manly radio show and podcast. Men feel more lonely, lost, and not useful in society than ever in history. Males are not attaching to school, work, or women. What it means to be a man appears lost. Is there a framework for being manly that we can unearth? Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care, and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Today, it's a great pleasure to welcome Jim Marshall to talk about what is manly. Now, Jim is a polymathic scholar who has devoted over 50,000 hours to his study and practice of multiple dimensions of human potential and development. Plus, Jim's the author of Septemics, Hierarchies of Human Phenomena. Welcome, Jim. Thanks, Timmy. It's a pleasure to have you on the show and to talk about what is manly because it seems to be, from what you read in the press, there's a bit of a crisis out there um, in respect of men finding their identity. Uh, there's reports that there's a lot of reports and research showing that men are disengaging from work, from school, from women. Um, so right. when we're talking about what is manly, if we're going to have a, a framework for that, uh, what are your thoughts and where would you like to start on on that discussion? Well, first, I'd like to explain to the guys what's happening and why it's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are, at most, about 8,000 people that control this planet. When I say this planet, I mean human society, globally. Now, these people, I refer to them as globalist fascists, Mm -hmm. because that's what they are. They are promoting a fascist agenda and attempting to push the entire world into a one-world totalitarian system with Mm -hmm. them at the top. And they're doing very well. They've been making tremendous progress. And at this point, I don't really see anything stopping them because most people don't have a clue what's going on. Right. Uh, Now, so they have a multifaceted plan. Basically, what you have to do is they have to slam the human race down into unspeakable degradation so that they can come along and save us. Right. So you're saying it's orchestrated. So, of, they're pushing people down so that then they have power. Is that what you're pointing Yes, to? because then they can come and, well, well, you know, we need to have uh, a one-world system so that uh, these terrible things won't happen. We can fix it all. Mm. And it's a scam. Right. Uh, and it, it is, in case anybody is not aware of this, uh, wealth has been accruing into the hands of these few people at an unprecedented rate in mm-hmm. recent decades. Right. Uh, now, the biggest barrier to these people had been the United States Mm -hmm. because it was the remaining superpower. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, the 800 pound gorilla in the room. So they have been focusing primarily on destroying the United States. Mm -hmm. And again, they're doing a very efficient job of it. And so one of the ways to, to destroy mankind in general, but the U.S. in particular, is to eviscerate the men. Because if you go through history, you will see that uh, all the great steps forward were done by men. 
Einstein, Newton, Erasmus, Cicero, Aristotle, Plato, Alexander. I mean, I could sit here all day and, and list names. Yeah. And it's because that, men I mean, are. From that side of things, does that, I mean, because if we're talking about you want to control it, but then to eviscerate men, wouldn't that be self, wouldn't, wouldn't that just be the opposite of what they're trying to achieve? I mean, if, if we're taking no. away, because um, unless it's the women taking control, it just, it, I, I'm not, well, not sure how that works. Actually, it's not the women taking control. Women, most women don't want to be in control. Mm. That's why so many women marry older, richer men. Right. Okay. Uh, most, you know, most women, most women want to be uh, pampered, cherished, worshipped, placed on a pedestal, taken care of. So they can probably have a lot of women would disagree uh, with that. <laughs> Pardon? A lot of women probably would disagree with that. Well, I said most women. I didn't say all. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, so you're saying okay. that the, few, so, the uh, one that the, uh, the way that the way they're approaching the women is to make the women try to compete with men. Mm. Now, both there certainly is a polarization out there. Right. Yeah. Wrecking, wrecking the the stable working relationships between men and women mm. is one of the ways that they are they are bringing hurt society to its knees. Mm. Is that the intention? Do you think they want to so, bring society to its knees? Yes, yes. This is what not a so subtle point. Right. So what does that serve? I mean, yeah. it just seems to me, I don't, I mean, if making, you know, bringing people down to their knees doesn't seem to be serving an agenda of moving things forward. Um, unless I'm They're not moving things forward. They're trying. Right. So it's they, just about control. Is that what you're saying? The same thing the Soviet. Yes. They're trying to do the same thing the Soviets tried to do, the right. same thing the okay. Nazis tried to do. Right. Okay. Uh, the same thing the Romans tried to do. Okay? Who's they? So all of those when were those eight... totalitarian systems. Right. So who are they? I mean, because you said around 8,000 people control that. But, I mean, a, a lot of people would argue that the United States yes. largely controls the world to a degree. Is that but no. so when you're saying who? No, that, when... these, that's, why I call them, that's why I call these people globalist fascists. Right. They're not Americans. They're not Englishmen. They're not Frenchmen. Mm. They're not Chinamen. They're not. They they are globalists. They intend to rule the world. Literally, this is like something out of a James Bond novel. Yeah, and I'm just trying now, to identify who they are, though. I I mean, when you say they, well, I first of all, most of the people, especially the people in charge, are hidden from view. The ones who are not hidden from view, I can tell you, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Windsors, uh, and there are, you see, aren't Rockefellers American? People, yeah, but they don't think of themselves as Americans. They think of themselves as, as globalists and mm. wanting to be part of the elites who control the world. Right. And these recent bank failures are just part of that. The recent inflation is just part of that. The war in Ukraine is just part of that. So you're saying the Rockefellers instigated the war in Ukraine? No, not them specifically. The right. globalist fascists are behind all of this. Right. So and the, So with the, the war in Ukraine... The, this, this, yeah. But, no, I was just going to ask, with because with, with your uh, use of war in Ukraine, for example, um, you yeah. know, you're saying yeah. that the globalists were behind that. So you're saying that Putin is working yes. with the globalists to and to do that. Is that where you're coming with that? First of all, he may not even realize it. Okay. Because they are they are pulling the strings from behind the curtain. Right. Okay. And so a lot of the people. 
some of these people actually think that they are empowered. Mm. And some of them don't because right. you have different tiers. You see, you have the people at the very top, mm. and then you have the people who are their pawns. Mm. And that would include people like the Clintons, the Bushes, mm. uh, the Bidens, and so forth. These so, are criminals. These people are criminals. I mean, actually, they're worse than criminals because. There are actually some criminals, like Carlo Gambino, mm. he was a self-respecting criminal. They never got him for anything. He right. died in his home a free man because he was very smart. And he is one of the guys who didn't want to have anything to do with drug dealing. So all the, 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 the 8,000 8, people roughly that are controlling the world, you're saying they're all criminals, like the Rockefellers and things like that. Well, actually, what I was just trying to make a point about Carlo Gambino, they're oh. much worse than Carlo Gambino. Yeah. Carlo oh. Gambino was, was not crazy. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to rule the world. Yeah. He, was, he was a businessman. Right. And, mm. and he didn't want to have anything to do with drugs because he saw that as not smart. Mm. And Rudy Giuliani was able to break up the mafia in New York Mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s by using mm -hmm. the RICO law, which he had something to do with writing, mm -hmm. and because of the drugs. Because mm -hmm. when they get you on drugs, it's a 25-year sentence, mm -hmm. and then they will talk. Yeah, Like Sammy the Bull Gravano, who came mm -hmm. out, who was part of the Gambino crime family, this is after Gambino died, who came out and ratted. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they gave him uh, you know, put him in the witness protection program. He's out now walking around. He's on the internet. Yeah. So if we take this, yeah. I mean, that's a so, global geopolitical geopol environment. If we're going to bring it back yes. to, to the question, what is manly? And then we're dealing with an individual, let's say um, a, an adolescent that's, you know, sitting in their, their, um, their basement playing video games. They're probably not really aware of the, right. the geopolitics, even if it is affecting them. That's right. Um, if that's correct. Right. But so how to have if we're we're dealing with that situation and what we're doing the aim of what we're trying to do here is to get to you know what is a framework to being manly um if we're going to and, and right. get some guidance around that you know use the law of attraction right. let me give you, yeah let me give you the give the guys something very specific yeah number one drop out of pop culture mm -hmm. pop culture is a creation of the globalist fascists mm -hmm. it's there to keep you distracted while they steal the world. Yeah. They don't want you reading Aristotle and Plato and Cicero and Thomas Mann and Dostoevsky because that will smarten you up. That will get you to realize that you're being played for a fool. They want you to be subliterate they want you to be playing video games, watching TV, going to the movies, doing drugs, drinking alcohol, okay, and getting into all of the disgusting perversions that pass for normal behavior in modern society. So what you're saying is for them so to start to read, reading, essentially, reading good books. Oh, well, reading, reading part of the educational of books. Yeah. Yeah. But, but – the main thing is that the pop culture is there to distract you and to brainwash you, both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you go back and you look at TV programs that were made in the 50s and 60s, they're mm -hmm. completely different. Now, when I say the 50s and 60s, I'm, I mean like up to about 1964. Yeah. By the way, this faction, the globalist fascists, they killed Jack Kennedy. Mm. Yeah, we're getting off the topic there a little bit. We're, we're, getting, we're, we're talking about how to, you know. So that's when that. it started. Yeah. That's, that's when it started on November 22nd, 1963 mm. was the beginning of this. Yeah. So how can now, we, these, now, you know, you're saying that's the beginning back in 1963 and we are where we are now. Right. How can we move things forward from here? I mean, what, as you say, the, the, stop okay. watching pop culture. 
and you know read some uh, intellectual material or i mean i don't know if you can watch you know i'm sure there's um things you need like to YouTube. drop out of pop culture yeah because a it's a waste of time and b mm-hmm. it's brainwashing mm-hmm. in its place you want to educate yourself mm. on smart people now there are some people on the internet you're one of them who presents thank you Useful, intelligent, beneficial information. Somebody like Kim Iverson. Okay? Mm. Uh, there are people or the, the podcast redacted. These people are not pulling any punches. They're, they're, mm. they're, they're telling you what's going on about all of the chicanery, all of the lies. Mm. Okay, all governments lie. And as far as I can tell, all governments lie all the time. Yeah. So don't believe anything that the government says. Now, if so you you're saying as a framework from, for oh, being manly is to to think for yourself, is that if we to yes, to that up? yeah, yes, because all of this crap is to knock you down, to have you not be self centered, not be a man, not be what men had been. For six thousand years, I like that you talk about. You mentioned you self-centered there. What What do you? I mean, for for a young boy, a teenager, or even an older guy. Let's say, you know, for me, I think I was probably you know a bit lost even in my early thirties, maybe. Um, but so, for for people, you know, how would you say? What could people do to be centered? What What is? What do you mean by say? You say you know. Uh, self-centered where, where I'm, 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 I'm taking it that you're not meaning being selfish but it's being fine and centered within yourself how how would someone do that what i mean is take care of yourself ah. uh, so you know, and you're talking you're and i'm assuming you? knowing you I'm, I'm i'm guessing you're talking not just physically but mentally as well and spiritually is that right yes yeah. yes there are many courses you could follow. There's meditation of many kinds. Yeah. There's psychotherapy of many kinds. There are religions of many kinds. Yeah. There are millions of books, mm. brilliant books. So how would we, and if we're going to categorize, these, take, can, we, can we split that out? If we're going to take care of ourselves or self-care, what would if you were to break that up? I mean, I, I mean, I, I use those three of spirituality, mental, and physical. But what what would be your? How would you break that up? Well, I don't know that you need to break it up. It depends on the person. Okay, yeah. It depends yeah. on what's wrong with you. I mm-hmm. mean, if you're a couch potato, let me tell you something. Mm. The the American military recently divulged mm. that seventy seven percent of American males between 18 and 24 are unfit for military service. Right. That statistic goes right to the heart of what we're discussing. So what was the definition now, of, most of what's of the, required for military service then? What was fi- – where, where, Well, if, they, have, you know, they have certain things about you can't be overweight too much, you can't be mm. mentally ill, you know. There's a variety of things that disqualify you. Yeah. Okay. So they are selecting from, the military is selecting from only 23% of the male population. So what, what I mean, now, that, would that be a good criteria to so, use for what, what, you know, to, in respect of being manly is, um, you know, what is that? No, I'm just, say, I'm just saying okay. it is an indication of the gravity of the situation. Yeah, and that's the point of what we're talking about. So I'm trying to work out how do we, right. what is the way forward? Um, I right. think the gravity of so, the situation is pretty clear. All, <laughs> right, right. So, see, first of all, by getting out of pop culture and reading literature, great yeah. literature, Thomas Mann, William Faulkner, Anthony Burgess. And there seems uh, to be a Charles lot of Dickens. People want that. There's, I mean, there's a lot of discussion out there now that's becoming very popular where people are actually having in-depth discussions. It sounds like there's a real need for that, that people want it to have that more in-depth discussion. Do you think that's the case? or? Well, the people who have the problem that you and I are discussing, mm. like the 77% of 
American males that are not fit for military service. Hmm. Those are not people who are sitting around reading Dostoevsky. So how do we reach those people? And Well, hopefully some of them will listen to this. But let me give you something else. Yeah. Is something else that's very specific, okay? So I, so I am the discoverer of hitherto mm. unknown natural phenomena which mm. greatly aid in the understanding of people, including yourself, yeah. from which I constructed a revolutionary practical system called Septemix mm-hmm. and published it in the book you referenced, yeah. Septemix Hierarchies Human Phenomena. Yeah. This book is a roadmap for life. Yeah. It it tells you across 35 axes exactly where you are mm. and how to get advanced. Yeah. So all of these men should get this book. Now, mm. some of these things are more distinctly pointed toward manliness than others. Mm. Yeah. For example, there's the scale of attack. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, part of the brainwashing of these evil people is that you shouldn't be willing to attack anything. I don't, I mean, well, I've got the, news the discussion that we've had in the past on that, I mean, maybe the name is, I mean, because Jordan Peterson says a similar sort of thing, you should be a monster, which, you know, offends some people, but that's not what you're referring to when you're talking about the scale of attack. I'm talking about the willingness to attack mm. that, you know. Yeah. I was, when I was in school, Mm. always either the smallest kid in the class or almost the smallest kid in the class. Maybe maybe either the shortest or the second shortest. Because Mm. I started school a year earlier, and there were boys who left back. So there were a lot of kids in the class who were like a head taller than I Mm. or more. Okay. I didn't have that. (laughs) I was always really tall. My son's 14, he's six foot. So... (laughs) So I, I don't relate. Days. I don't relate to that. No, but I, I, I'm okay. I'm, yeah. But I'm trying to give you an anecdote here to explain what I mean. Yeah. In those days, the question was not whether you would fight; it was yeah. whether you would win. Mm, okay. Fighting was ubiquitous yeah. amongst males in those days. Yeah. So, you know, I uh, was intimidated quite a bit. Mm. And so I finally developed a willingness to attack. Mm. I joined a boxing club. I Mm. learned how to box. And I beat the crap out of some guys a foot taller than I. Yeah. Okay? In front of everybody. I made it a point to do it in front of everybody. Mm. So people would see, this little guy is willing to attack. I think I'm going to pick on somebody else. Would that be appropriate to do today? Uh, I mean, I mean, I can relate to that. We, when I grew up, we had gang fights, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm, you know, I wouldn't do that sort of. Beha- I have a whole raft of different tools available to me. Um, right. So when I say attack, the attack is different. It's it's having that willingness to be I don't strong and firm. Necessarily mean physically attack. Yeah. Okay. Physically attack. Yeah. I just wanted to. All clarify right. That. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have been very successful in the judicial system. Mm. When somebody commits an unlawful act against me, I take them to court and I win. Yeah. Okay? I'm willing to attack. Mm. And now a lot of people, they they get a whiff of this and they say, we don't want to mess with this guy. And they Mm. settle out of court. Yeah. Okay? And then other people who are too stupid to figure that out get their clocks cleaned. Do you think that coming back to that self-care, this willingness to attack, as you're talking about one of the scales in Septemix, I mean, for for an adolescent that's sitting in a basement and saying, okay, you know, they're they're not even having that that desire to get out there and give it a go. And and the the attack doesn't necessarily mean, you know, as you're describing, this full-on frontal, you know, fisticuffs. It can be, I'm willing to get out there and, and actually apply for a job and give that a go and state my case that I'm worthy well, of being, being a, you know, a, a, a contributor to society. I'm willing to stand up. Someone's going to say, no, you know, you don't have that job. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Is that, you know, fall within the category of what you're talking about? No, I wouldn't call that attacking. But yeah. remember, Septemix has 
35 different axes. Mm. And I can tell, tell you this. Any situation, dilemma, or problem of any person can successfully be addressed by one or more of these scales. Right. And I went out of my way to make this user friendly. Mm. So basically, whatever the situation is, okay, mm -hmm. you open up the book, you find which scale or scales are relevant. Mm. Yeah. You study them. You find your position on the scale. That alone will clarify your mind and encourage you. Then when you know your level, you move up to the next level. Yeah. And you've improved your life. Yeah. Voila. So from that perspective. So, and you can do this, of course, 35 axes. Yeah. And as you say, that, that those scales apply to, to everybody. If we're going to bring it and narrow it down to this framework of trying to find what is manly, for, to give the people that are right. locked out their guidance, how do how do we do that? How, what would they do? I mean, what, where would you turn okay. to? You oh. mentioned the scale of attack, and that that's then having. I mean, the way I interpret that is having the courage to stand up for what you see is right. Um, is is how I I interpret that. Um, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. So but, you know the scale of attack. I mean, the scale of attack has seven levels. Hmm. Okay, level two which is almost at the top, is willing to attack. Yeah. The only level above that is no need to attack. Yeah. And that's an enviable position to be in. Yeah, that's a completely but different... Most people, are, most people are down at levels three, four, five, six, and seven. Mm. And I, I mean, I, I, mean, I do whole, like that scale from the perspective because I remember... And I love what my my mum taught me when I was growing up. It's, it's, she was always there, it takes two to tango, and it's like as you said that that high level is no need to attack. You're not even in a situation. You don't uh, the way you conduct yourself is not in a situation. So you're ever in that that position. And I've noticed a lot in my life the way I deal with things now is I don't get in. I don't even get in a situation where it's it's even needed because of how I conduct myself. Um, so right. I find that, but at the same token too, if, as you say, you say to someone from a perspective who's done something wrong, um, I've been willing to do that. I've willing been willing to lodge um, cases myself. Um, in you know, right. there's been various states in in with um, with claims that you know had issues with clients and things like that. And it's like, well, this is I'm willing to do that if I need to. Right. Um, right. So that's and I think so, a, that comes back to that courage. Uh, if having that foundation of courage, which is when we're talking about a framework, I mean, certainly a manly, I mean, I would say there's an element of courage there. I mean, that's not to say women aren't courageous, but we're focusing on the man side of things. Um, when we're also looking at the Septemix book, wh where else would you, you know, if, if it some because there's 35 scales, it's a lot to digest in all at once. So we'd want to take chunks. If you were to take someone who's right. completely lost, Man that's or young boy, adolescent is completely lost. How would you use Septemix to guide them? Where, where would you start? What would be the, the first couple of things that first scales that you would suggest to look at and, and to improve on? First of all, it depends very much on the person and the situation. Mm. My general advice is if the person can read reasonably well, mm -hmm. uh that he should get a copy of this book. It's available hardbound, softbound, and ebook. Ebook is, of course, very inexpensive. Yeah. And I went out of my way to make this easily accessible to the average person. Mm -hmm. So well, let me just tell tell your listeners what Septemix is, so they know what we're talking okay. about. Yeah. Septemix is a philosophical science mm. based on the fact that many phenomena related to human beings occur in a sequence of seven levels. Right. Septemics comprises a collection of scales or sequences, each of which breaks down various human phenomena into a hierarchy of seven steps. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you if I were to read to you the names of the of the scales, you would get a context of what material is covered. Mm -hmm. But what I can tell you for sure is that each of these 35 scales is unique. You cannot learn anything about scale A by studying scale B. Yeah. That's good news because between them, they cover everything. Yeah. They, and and you, also, they... the fact 
I was going to say, can you split out to the because there's individual and there's group scales, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so generally, my general advice, without knowing the person, I mean, I've had a lifetime of counseling people, you mm. know, under specific contexts and telling them with specificity what to do. Yeah. But in a general sense, what I would say is, if you can read reasonably well, uh, like anybody who can read. You know, a high school level can read this. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, there are some 13 year olds who are more literate than others, you know, who yeah. can read this book. And there are some people who are adults who can read this book. They're not literate enough. Yeah. I mean, uh, illiteracy, you know, is, is in gradations. Mm -hmm. It's not merely literate and illiterate. There's a scale of literacy. Yes. And some people are not totally illiterate they're only partially illiterate mm. so what i'm saying is get the book mm. study it it's a textbook on a new subject so study it starting with the first line of the first page from the beginning to the end and when you're done go back to the beginning and find your level on every scale by the time you finish that you will be a new person so that's my general advice yeah how would someone, I mean, if we're talking with, you know, a person that's lost, um, you know, and, you know, not wanting to, to get out there, how would they, you know, what would, I mean, can they be motivated to, to read a book? I mean, because it is a quite in-depth book. Um, yes. I mean, well, you cover say. off scales of, <laughs> you know, what are your basic purpose? Would that be a, a good place to start? I mean, and what is, you know, your personal influence? Well, when different scales affect different people differently. So mm -hmm. one guy might look at a certain scale like the scale of motivation, and that might really ring a bell to him, mm -hmm. see? So he mm -hmm. could start there. Yeah. Having said that, let me, let me say something else that I've, I've counseled many people with. Mm -hmm. Don't focus on the barriers. Focus on the goals. Yeah, okay. Current society, current society brainwashes people to focus on the barriers, mm. right? So a guy says, oh, I'm too short, I'm too thin, I'm too fat, I can't read well enough, I don't speak English well, you know, I'm from a poor family. These are barriers. Don't yeah. focus on that. Successful people do not do that. Mm. I'll give you an example, right? Let's say you have a, a professional baseball player, right? Mm. He's in the batter's box, right? Yeah. The ball is coming at him 90 miles an hour and moving in three to three dimensions. It's mm. moving up, down, left, and right. Okay. Yeah. And coming at him, right? Mm -hmm. And he has literally a half a second to decide what he's going to do with that pitch. Yeah. Literally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if he's thinking about, oh, I struck out last time, oh, my wife is mad at me, I'm getting audited by the IRS, he's not going to hit that pitch. Mm. He's not present. Yeah. In order to succeed at anything, you have to be present. You have to be there in the moment, mm. which means all of this propaganda is trying to get you to focus on the barriers. Yeah. So from that perspective, you know, I mean, it sounds like the the where when you're talking about a framework for them is one of the key foundation of framework is is to one well you said focus on the goals, but I'd take that a step back and say, well, to have a goal. Right. Yeah. Well, it's true that people who've been badly beaten mm. become goalless people. Mm. You see this in uh, 1984, Winston Smith, the protagonist, mm. you know, in the beginning of the book, he has some life in him, you know? He tries to get a relationship going with a woman he loves. Mm. And at the end, he's beaten. He's goalless. He just sits there and plays chess with his friend. That's his life. Okay. That's a good analogy. And that shows is that really that, So I was gonna say that's a good analogy because that does that really show where because when we're talking about men that are, you know, um 
that are not engaging with schoolwork or women anymore. Um, is it because of, as you say, he didn't have any goals anymore? He'd been he he allowed himself to be beaten down. Does that come back to what you were talking about, the underlying principle of the scale of attack? Say where it's no matter what comes your way, you keep standing up and keep moving forward. Well, first of all, everyone has goals. It's just that people who've been traumatized get buried. Okay. So. A lot, of, a lot of the work that I did as a human development engineer in mm-hmm. helping hundreds of people over thousands of hours was getting the trauma out of the way, and then the person's natural resilience, whatever that is, comes back by itself. It doesn't right. go away. It just becomes submerged. Right. Okay. So you have a guy who's had some terrible things done to him. You get him in some kind of therapy, it takes it off him, mm. and then he says, you know, I forgot. I wanted to be a comedian when I was a kid, and I completely forgot about that. You see? Yeah. And then now he's got that goal back again. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Whatever's going on in your life, mm. let's say a guy says, I sure would like to get a date. Mm. And then he says, but... I don't have nice clothes. I need a haircut. I don't have any money to spend. Uh, and I'm short. You mm-hmm. know, whatever. Okay? Yeah. So that, but he's just defeated himself mm. by all those buts. So I would say, put all of that stuff aside. Yeah. There are people who have succeeded under terrible circumstances because they did that. Well, some would say you even succeeded because of that, because of their limitations. Take, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, um, you know, he had an accent and he was told if you want to be an actor to lose the accent and he was a bit stilted in how he moved. But that seemed to be the, that was what was actually made him so successful in the role of the Terminator. And then if you look at all these roles after that, he still had the accent, he was still stilted in what he moved, but he persisted long enough to get what he was accepted. Is that part of that resilience? I'm, I'm very much a fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger on several different levels. Mm. He's a perfect example. Mm. He's a person who just didn't focus on that barrier. He did yeah. not let them rain on his parade. Yeah. He went forward and succeeded. If he had focused on that, he would have let people talk him out of it. Yeah. You know, I played varsity football. Okay, mm. when I was five foot six, I played against guys who were a foot taller and outweighed me by 50, 60, 70 pounds. Mm. Okay, I just did not accept the limitation. I, I like that, did not accept the limitation. Right. How That's we- another way of saying don't focus on the barriers. People who are oppressive will continually try to give you barriers. Mm. And I'll give you an example. I was a math whiz. I took 26 semesters of math. I took so much math that I even took math in the summertime to take extra math. So I would have more to prepare me for an engineering career. So I show up at this... This school, this is a this is one of the top public schools in New York City. You have to take tests to get in there, right? Mm. I showed up there in the summer to take advanced algebra. And so the guy that the registrar is sitting here says, Okay, what do you want to sign up for? I said advanced algebra. He said, You know, that's gonna be a tough course. Mm. I looked at this guy, he didn't know anything about me. Yeah. You know, I got 95 in math, year after year after he didn't know anything about me. I yeah. just I just ignored it. I just thought this guy's a dope. Yeah. <laughs> so you just right. like, yeah, so I'm doing it. Do regardless of what you think or anybody else thinks. This is it sounds like knowing I got, that was your attitude in I life. I got a ninety. Right, I got a ninety-two, which is an A. Yeah. And 
you know, I just thought, this is an oppressive person. I would mm. hate to be this this person's son, you know? But knowing you too, I mean, because we've done a few interviews of, together, I mean, the other thing I'd add to that, because you're, you're very determined in the sense of when you say you want to do something, you're going to do it. The other thing I've noticed about you is when yeah. you, the things that you do, or from what I understand that you do, it doesn't harm anyone else. You're doing it for for your you know right. for your growth, your benefit, and and how you can benefit the world. Um, is that something you'd That's add right. into a framework? It's you know, do things in a way that adds benefit. Be persistent. Go, yep, this is what I'm doing. Um, but in in a the caveat being, it's you know you're not going to roll tanks into Poland, for example. Right. Yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't do anything like that. I wasn't involved mm. in harming people. Yeah, because it just seemed you naturally know, that that was your framework. Was I, I'm gonna, you know, don't tell me what I can't do. I'm gonna do what I want to do. What I set myself, I'm gonna do. But everything that you chose was either just for it didn't it didn't harm anyone, but it was either and you benefited from it or you and others benefited from you what you were doing. Right. Right. Yeah. That's right. is that fair to say? Or, or? that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I think the whole point is that I got that idea at a fairly early age mm. not to focus on the barriers. Yeah. To yeah. focus on the goals. Because people, see, people give you excuses for things. Mm. Yeah. You know, and if you accept, they, they are giving you barriers. Mm. Don't accept them. It's now, interesting how that changes when you take excuses out of fact. it. So go ahead. I'm not saying to ignore the facts. You can't ignore the facts. That's foolish. I'm mm. saying don't focus on the barriers. Focus yeah. on the goal. So, for example, I started working out. Well, I was a, sort of a child athlete, so I was always working out. Yeah. I mean, I was always playing baseball, football, whatever, continuously. Mm from when I was like two, okay? But when I was 12, I got really serious about it, mm. okay? And I got into formal training in organized sports, mm. okay? Because, you know, like I told you before, I wasn't, I wasn't going to allow big bullies who were a year older than me and, and a head taller than me to push me around I mean, yeah. I was in the class with them because I was smart enough to be a year ahead of them. Mm. So I, was, I just wasn't going to let them push me around. So I, I joined a boxing club. Mm. Okay. I literally got trained in boxing and I spoke to some people who had been around and I learned how to assert myself. Yeah. Okay. I just wasn't going to accept that limitation. What I find interesting when you, you talk about your that. history before, because you mentioned you you were exceptional at academics, and at the same time you were in the sports as well, um, which yes. those two don't generally go together. Normally, it's you're either a nerd um, or you're you know you're you're a jock, so to speak, using that that broad um, description. They don't they don't kind of mix, but you balanced both, and and from what I understand, quite successfully. So how did again something is that fall into this not focusing on the barriers? You just said I'm I'm I like doing my study, I I enjoy that, and I'm going to do it regardless of what anyone says. And I like That's football right. as well. I'm gonna do that. Right. How did you no, balance that? No, how did you make that, you know, that decision to say because no. some people will go, Oh, I don't wanna yeah, they might be say the jock and go, Oh, I don't wanna do that because it'll be considered nerdy, so I'm not gonna do that because it might affect my image. But that right. didn't bother you. You just went, I'm going to That's do this. That's focusing on the barriers. If you have some nerdy guy with glasses who's skinny and reads yeah. a lot, you know, he thinks, well, you know, I can't go out for sports. Nobody's going to take me seriously. He's focusing on the barriers. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe football is not the right game for him. Maybe he should go into uh, wrestling where mm. there are weight categories Yeah. or swimming. You see, mm -hmm. but don't accept that because most people or like the athlete, he thinks he is like a big dumb jock. People tell him he's not smart, right? Well, he accepts that. Don't accept mm. it. Mm. Yeah, don't accept barriers. 
don't focus on the barriers. Now, you want to be in touch with reality. Mm. Yeah, I was never going to be a jockey. But, <laughs> that was too tall. <laughs> right. Like, for example, uh, when I was a freshman, I was on, on the intramural volleyball team. Mm. Okay. I never played volleyball in my life. I had never had a volleyball in my hand. Mm. Okay. Didn't bother me. You know, our, our teacher said, okay, here's how you played. He taught it to us and played. And so I played a dozen other sports. So I thought, well, I can do this. Yeah. You know, and so I did very well in volleyball. Mm. Okay. Does that so, I mean just not focusing okay. on the barriers? Is that the same sort of thing? Because um, if we because we talk about those three categories: work, schooling, and fitness, uh, and women, and dealing with women. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, don't know how to talk to to women. They don't want to go out and do that. Is it right. the same sort of thing? Just go and get out there and do it, or just just go out and chat to someone? Well, there's more. There is more to it than that. But let me say this on that specific subject. Yeah. Uh, there was a time in my life when. A lot of attractive women were after me when mm. I was young, yeah. when I was still good looking. And so I sort of got this reputation, not only with the women, but with the guys. You know, guys would come to me for advice. Yeah. They'd say, Jim, t- you know, t- tell me how to handle my girlfriend, you know. Mm. And, and what I did to them was I just, I just, I'd say to them, Okay, what message do you want this girl to know? Um, and the guy would say, well, I wanted to know that you know, I think she's really attractive and I'd like to go out with her. And I'd say, okay, say to her, you're really attractive and I'd like to go out with you. <laughs> it's pretty obvious then, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was once at a company party, okay? Uh, and there was this woman there I had never seen before. I didn't know her name, but she was gorgeous. Mm. So I went upstairs into the company office, and I looked up her name, and I got her phone number. Because mm-hmm. I asked somebody, you know, who's that girl? They told me her name, and then I went and got her phone number. So I called her up the next day. Yeah. And I just said to her, remember me? I was at the party. She said, oh, yeah. I said, well, I think you're incredibly beautiful. How about coming out with me? <laughs> just like that. She said yes. Yeah. Okay. So, like, you know, what is it? Do you think that's stopping men from? Parents. What is it? Do you think that's stopping men from actually going out and doing? Because it? It, to me, it seems pretty simple. Um, you know, you just ask the question. If, yeah. You know, you if you're afraid of of defeat, you're not going to mm. get anywhere. Oh, I like that. You know. One of the things that I did in sports, in all the sports, was I wasn't afraid of, of being defeated. You know, yeah. like, you know, if I came up against yeah. some guy who was 60 pounds heavier than I, I wasn't afraid. I hit him. You know, yeah. that's what you do in football. Yeah. I threw the block, took him down. Yeah. Now, if I, if, if, if he were the same weight as me, he would have gone flying. Okay. Mm. But, Still, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't. And so, like, uh, you know, there are, like, you, you have to be willing to be defeated. Ah. So, you know, not a, the, yeah. The, the, That's a different one. The greatest baseball players in the world strike out plenty. You know, I, I somebody once asked you. Go ahead. Somebody once has Yogi Bear. Yogi Bear is probably the greatest catcher of all time. He mm-hmm. was the uh, the most valuable player in the American League three years in the 50s. Okay, mm-hmm. And somebody once asked him, what did you do when you were in a slump? He said, I never thought I was in a slump. I always figured I'd get a hit the next time around. <laughs> I love that. We, we did talk about that before, so too. He, with Richard Petty was the same. He, he, he turned up the racetrack running who's going to run second. He just had a positive attitude. Yeah. He was maybe maybe an inch or two taller than I. Okay? He was not a big guy, but yeah. he was loaded with muscle. He used a big bat, and when he hit the ball, it went. Yeah, and he really could 
put the bat on the ball. So he wasn't he wasn't afraid. He figured, mm-hmm. oh well, okay, I struck out next time I'll get a hit. I think that's an interesting that combination you put there though, is not not afraid. Don't be afraid to be defeated, but also be willing to be defeated because it's gonna happen. And you right. back up again. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean I've had girls say, No, I don't want to go out with you. Okay, fine. She gave me a straight answer. Go on to the next one. Yeah, I think because I had a friend when I was in the army who was in that category. He was always dating these really amazing women. They were beautiful, intelligent, um, kind, and couldn't work out because he wasn't the brightest spark on the planet. And one day I asked him, and said, how is it you're dating all these great women? And he put his arm around my shoulder, turned into this wise Obi-Wan character, and he just said, Damien, what you don't see is I ask a lot. Most of them say no. You just see the ones that say yes. Um, right, and it was like to me that was just a big life lesson right there and then, which I'm glad I got it you right. know, at early age. Just just keep asking the question; it's a numbers game. And is that you know, right. from that perspective? I mean, how do you think you know from someone who's feeling defeated, in the sense of you know they they can't get out there? How do they find that courage to say, "Hey, I'm just going to get out there. I'm just going to do it." Well, first of all, the best thing to do is to get the September book because. Mm. It gives you the gradients. Mm. Each of those seven levels of each of the 35 skills is the gradients yeah. in the corresponding areas of life. So you find what scale, you know, mm. you, like, for example, yeah. the scale of basic purposes. Every person has one of seven basic purposes. Mm. When you find out what your pur- basic purpose is, it's an epiphany. It's yeah. like, wow, now I understand myself. Because what you do is you throw out the other six levels. They're not for you. They're for other people. Yeah. You see? And you have that level. And that's who you are. This mm-hmm. is what you're trying to do. Yeah. That is a big help. Yeah. Okay. The other thing is you can use it to find out what level you're at and move yourself up. Because you see, let's say you're at level five on any scale. If you try to attain level four, you will get there. Yeah. I don't know how long. It might take a week. might take a month. might be a year. Mm-hmm. Depends on situation, your resources, and everything else. Yeah. But if you try to go to level one, two, or three, you're not going to get there. Mm. It's too steep a gradient. Yeah. Which is why crash diets don't work. And crash mm. exercise programs don't work. Everything has to be done on a gradient. And I I have given the people the gradients across mm. 35 axes. Mm. Yeah. So from that perspective, we're running out of time because um, we're going to run out of the, the ad block and the, the news is going to kick in on the radio show. Can we, um, if we can just sum that up. So from that perspective, and when we talked about not being afraid, um, not being afraid of defeat, not focusing on your limitations or the barriers. How would you sum it up if we're going to sum up a framework for being manly? I think the most important thing is to not buy the propaganda that is inflicted on all of us on mm-hmm. a daily basis. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, we're going to save the planet. Save the planet? Most people can't even save themselves. Mm. They, most people can't even save enough money to buy the car they want. They're going to yeah. save the planet? Mm. That's just dopey. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Okay? Yeah. Uh, okay. So focus if, you're, on- if, you're not in good, if you're not in good physical condition, there's a thousand ways to do it. Join mm. a gym. Start running. Take up a sport. Join a tennis club. Okay? Build yourself up. Because yeah. when you have a physique... Okay, men are going to admire you and women are going to want you. Mm. And people, you know, appearance has a lot to do with uh, success in life. I'm not mm. saying that's the only thing. Or make yourself a well read person, you know. Mm. Read a hundred important books. I'm not talking about trash, I'm mm. talking about the great writers of the world, Balzac and uh, Leon Uris and mm. uh, 
Charles Dickens and uh, George Eliot. Read them, okay? By the time you finish reading a hundred of those books, assuming you look up the words you need to look up that you don't know, mm. you'll be a much smarter person. Yeah, you'll be you'll be you'll be bright in conversation. Now, I have no problems talking to anybody about anything. Yeah, because well, I'm well. Women are attracted to intelligent people, men. That's for sure. Yes, but mm. men are too. Yes. Men want to be around somebody who knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So those are some very concrete things you can do. You take care of yourself, improve your your intellectual ability, right. improve your physical, um, your fitness, or your health anyway. Right. Your appearance. Mm. You know, I look at people when I go around now, they're disgusting. Mm. I mean, most of them are totally out of shape. Mm. Even if they're not obese, mm. they look like they couldn't play a sport. Mm. And then they wear a five-year-old T-shirt. Their hair looks like a comb has never seen it, mm. you know? And they have scraggly beards and everything. Mm. Take care of yourself. Dress yourself up. Get yourself in shape. Get some nice clothes. Mm. Learn how to speak properly. Yes. You know, if you spend if you spend time listening to people who know how to speak, like uh Jordan Peterson, mm. your your vocabulary improves, your speaking improves, mm. or even if you're just reading it in a book. Yeah. It it gets into you. and then you speak well, you dress well, you look fit, and then people are gonna want to hire you. Yeah. I had all kinds of situations where I walked into jobs, you know, as a young man. People didn't know me, but but I looked fit and confident, and I was uh, manly, as you say. And you know, and and I'd say the situation. Oh, you need a bar barkeep? Okay, I can tend bar. Bang, I'm in the job. I mean, I did that all kinds of times, many yeah. times. Cool. Love that. You know, so, and if the guy said no, okay, fine. So I said no. Yeah, and that was coming back to that, you know, willing to be defeated. It's it's okay. You move on to the next. Right. Yeah. Right. I was once working out in the gym with probably the fastest runner on our football team. This guy was greased lightning. Okay. Yeah. And he said to me, uh, I forget how the conversation came. I was a lineman. Mm. So I, w I was there for my strength mm. and do durability, not for my speed. He said, okay, I'll bet I can beat you. Okay, so he gave him the ball, and he ran, and he beat me. That mm. didn't bother me. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I was, I, was not, I was not intimidated. I had seen this guy run a hundred times. Yeah. Okay? I knew how he could run, and he was right. I couldn't catch him. So, so what? Yeah. So just get out there and give it a go. He's you know, if we were summing yeah. that up, instead, so don't don't focus on the barriers. Don't be afraid of defeat. Just get out there and be willing to be defeated. Get out there and give it a go. Is that right. you know, in a nutshell, right. one way we could sum yeah. up being manly? Yeah, and 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 the book that I wrote is a gold mine of information yeah. to every human being. And I'll, this is my last sentence. The book in this. The data in this book is vital for every human being and can help you to achieve your goals faster and easier mm. by explaining what might otherwise seem to be inexplicable or random. Yeah. Beautiful. So get the book and read it and you'll see. You'll, you'll say, wow. I love that. So Septemix, uh, we'll have those details in the show notes. Thank thank you very much, Jim, for your thoughts on being manly. Some Some very very wise advice there about getting out there and giving it a go. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.